welcome to the lecture on properties of heat affected zone. So, uh, we have already seen that uh, when we do the welding in case of fusion welding, uh, we come across the various zones and uh, we have the weld metal zone, you have heat affected zone and uh, then you have the unaffected uh, base metal. So, uh, as we know that since this uh, heat affected zone is uh, subjected to the uh, you know heating and cooling. So, uh, there is uh, microstructural changes in that zone and that affects the uh, properties of that zone and uh, uh, that uh, you know ultimately will be affecting the properties of the uh, welded joint. So, uh, we must know that uh, what way the properties especially the strength, toughness uh, and, and related things you know are uh, affected uh, you know uh, and, and, and that too especially in the heat affected zone because uh, as you see that after the you know fusion boundary zone you have a zone uh, where there will be the grain growth which is uh, occurring and then you have recrystallization then you have further you know uh, grain refinement. So, uh, and then you have intercritical zones further. So, uh, you know so we will be talking about uh, you know uh, what will be the properties of those heat affected zones especially with regard to the um, you know strength and toughness properties how they are affected uh, in the heat affected zone. So, uh, you know uh, the prediction of the properties of grain growth zone is required to know the amount and extent of grain growth and well thermal cycle because uh, you know properties uh, very much will be depending upon the uh, change in the grain uh, you know shape and size. So, as we know that uh, grain growth is very much associated uh, when the material is uh, you know heated uh, during the welding it is heated to a higher temperature and then uh, further it is cooled. So, uh, you know that uh, there will be uh, grain growth zone and that grain growth zone prediction itself uh, you know uh, is important because uh, from there only uh, we will be able to predict its uh, you know properties. So, uh, knowing the well thermal cycle uh, under what uh, you know thermal conditions the uh, specimen is subjected to. Uh, we have to know that how much uh, will be the order of the grain growth that is extent of grain growth and uh, then what will be its uh, effect on um, the temperature. So, uh, what happens that uh, normally uh, you know if you talk about the uh, heat affected zone. So, um, uh, in the heat affected zone uh, mostly you will have the uh, increase in the strength uh, in, in that uh, you know uh, reason, but uh, uh, at many at some of the occasions we also see that there will be even the decline in the strength also in the uh, heat affected zone. So, you know there may be softening also you know, that is also uh, observed uh, you know because uh, you know it is uh, heated to temperature around A 1. So, you know that may be subjected to excessive tempering. So, that may lead to even the softening also. Now, that also depends you know that what is the specific you know heat input of the welding process. So, depending upon the specific heat input of the welding process also, you will have the you know the, the extent of these tempered zone you know uh, formation. So, that can be predicted. So, uh, when you uh, suppose for example, when you uh, do the welding uh, of the large thick plates or, or, or large thickness steels using the uh, ultra slag welding suppose. So, uh, in the in those uh, basically what happens these uh, zones of these uh, tempered zones uh, or the softened zone they may shift towards the temperature even A 3. So, that also uh, you know uh, or even slightly above A 3 you know uh, in that uh, zone also it may be uh, shifted. So, uh, normally uh, what happens that uh, if you talk about uh, the uh, 
uh, you know hardness uh, values uh, in the case of uh, these uh, you know uh, HAZ uh, region. So, um, uh, normally you may have uh, two types of steels and uh, you may have a steel which is uh, having uh, you know less uh, carbon or in some case uh, it is having somewhat higher. So, uh, what happens that if suppose uh, if you just uh, take the example that if suppose uh, you have a um, uh, perlitic free steel and if you compare uh, that with the low carbon steel. So, if you have a you know perlitic free steel where where the you know carbon is uh, less than or equal to 0 0.09 percent. So, uh, they hardly react to these uh, thermal cycles whereas, uh, the steels in normal case like uh, the low carbon steels they are very much you know sensitive uh, to uh, this uh, uh, thermal cycle. So, um, uh, so if you take uh, the, the for the low carbon steel and if you try to see that how they you know uh, how there will be you know uh, change in the hardness of these two uh, specimen. So, uh, the graph so, so if you look at the graph. So, suppose you have uh, uh, if you look at a low carbon steel uh, you know in that case uh, uh, you will have uh, you know normally they are very much sensitive. So, suppose you have this zone is the weld zone and then you have another zone is the HAZ zone and then you have the base metal zone. And if suppose uh, this is your hardness. So, if the hardness is on the abscess uh, ordinate and your uh, if you take the distance along uh, you know the length. So, you will have uh, the weld metal zone then you have HAZ and then uh, later on uh, your uh, base metal comes. So, if you talk about the uh, perlitic free steels where the uh, carbon is uh, very very less in that case your uh, you know this is how the variation uh, uh, goes. So, this is for the uh, you know perlitic uh, free steels. And uh, similarly if you uh, but if you uh, try to see for the uh, you know low carbon steel uh, you know. So, in those cases you know this is a conventional low carbon steel. So, in those cases what happens that uh, the, the hardness is much smaller in this case, but in the HAZ zone it increases a lot and then um, further it will uh, come down. So, uh, and then so, so this way it will be varying. So, this will be for the conventional low carbon steel. So, such is uh, you know this is uh, hardness can be of any scale maybe weaker hardness or so. So, you will have about 300 or 280 uh, that scale is there. So, uh, what it shows that uh, you know uh, some of the steels are uh, you know uh, more prone or, or they are more sensitive uh, you know in HAZ normally you will see that you will have uh, larger hardness and uh, at some places uh, in some cases you have the uh, hardness is not at all altered. It may be uh, you know you can remotely uh, connect with those concepts which we have studied like when you have uh, the uh, you know carbon percentage is less in those cases uh, you know it is not hardenable. So, basically it is because of the you know martensitic or uh, maybe benetic martensitic structure which you get. So, uh, you know because of that uh, what you get is you get uh, this uh, sharp rise uh, in, in this uh, you know uh, range. So, most of the you know alloy steels uh, they will be showing this martensitic or martensitic benetic structure you know uh, over the wide interval of cooling maybe from 500 to you know 800 to 500 degree centigrade. Now, uh, many a times uh, we are also uh, concerned about uh, uh, you know the hardness. So, uh, if you talk about the uh, maximum underbid hardness. So, the maximum underbid hardness which is uh, achieved so, 
So, the maximum underbead hardness which is expected for the non-structural alloy steels so you know. So, that is uh, non-alloyed uh, structural steels. So, they are uh, basically uh, calculated using certain uh, standard uh, you know uh, formula and that is given by Co. And he has uh, give suggested that this uh, uh, HV max though so weaker hardness that maximum value will be 90 plus uh, 1050 C and then you have uh, 47 silicon and further you have uh, 75 manganese and then you have uh, 30 nickel and uh, 31 chromium. So, this way uh, you know uh, these uh, C, S, I, M, N, N, I or C, R normally they are in terms of uh, percentages and you can see that the maximum contribution comes from the percentage of carbon and as you increase the uh, carbon. So, certainly uh, that uh, you know under the uh, cooling uh, normal cooling conditions because the cooling rate is higher. So, in those cases you have uh, uh, you know hardenability is improved. So, so that way its contribution is maximum. So, you are getting going to get uh, you know even if uh, suppose uh, you are getting 1.1 percent of carbon. So, it will be uh, you see that it will be 214 if, if it has uh, 0.2 percent of carbon so it is going to 300.3 percent of carbon. So, it will go to uh, minimum of 400 and then you have the uh, you know uh, contribution by the different uh, alloying elements. So, that way uh, you know uh, underbeat zone hardness uh, you know uh, uh, are calculated and uh, basically they are available also for the you know uh, different steels or different plate thicknesses you have standard formulas by which you can find the uh, underbeat hardness. And uh, you know that uh, value has to be limited uh, you know. So, um, normally it is seen uh, it is supposed that it should be maximum to certain value maybe up to 3 for 50 or 400 you know uh, weaker uh, you know hardness because for low alloy steels you know uh, because in the area of creep temperatures. So, uh, even it is stricter. So, so accordingly you know for different requirements these uh, uh, these uh, so, uh, so the value has to be you know that, that, that limiting limit on these values are to be uh, uh, kept in mind because that may lead to uh, you know failure of the material under different conditions. Then uh, you know uh, so uh, majority of steels uh, will be showing that partnerstic and martenstic benetic you know uh, structures over a wide interval that is uh, you know from uh, in the cooling from 800 to uh, 500 degree centigrade. Now, uh, the next property uh, which is important uh, you know uh, to be kept in mind will be the toughness. So, uh, toughness uh, is a very important property for the material because uh, uh, you know when you do the welding uh, and your uh, weld metal zone uh, in that zone you have uh, the high temperature. So, that temperature is uh, basically then the heat is dissipating towards the heat affected zone and towards the uh, base metal zone. So, that uh, leads to uh, you know uh, various phenomena you know various microstructural changes. So, your change will be there also in the uh, grain sizes and that will induce basically uh, that will be affecting the toughness of the uh, material. Now, uh, the toughness you know uh, is normally affected because of the possible degeneration of uh, you know plasticity and, uh, and, and that is in HAZ which will be due to uh, reason one is that uh, you know aging. So, uh, aging that uh, results into decrease in the toughness value below the A 1 temperature because uh, you know you are heating and then uh, further you are cool. So, you are while heating. Uh, so, below the A 1 temperature it is like uh, the aging effect. So, that uh, you know that leads to the uh, you know uh, degeneration of uh, plasticity in the H A Z zone. So, it is basically uh, you know uh, 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 one of the reason is that and another is that uh, uh, more uh, conspicuous decline in toughness is observed you know uh, that is uh, because of the grain coarsening in 
you know the underbeat zone. So, in the underbeat zone uh, as you know that there the grain coarsening is taking place, grain growth region is there. So, that is extended up to that uh, region. So, because of that uh, you know uh, the grain coarsening is uh, you know taking place and because of that the uh, toughness value is uh, you know uh, uh, affected. So, so, the decrease in toughness value is uh, you know also related to the formation of unfavorable macrostructure in the zone. So, basically you have the formation of unfavorable macrostructures and uh, that leads to the decrease in rate of toughness and, and that is known also known as the transformation embrittlement. So, basically uh, you have the brittle uh, embrittlement is because of the loss in the toughness. So, you know uh, uh, that comes into you know picture uh, because of the uh, uh, decrease in the toughness value. So, if you uh, you know try to uh, look at the uh, you know uh, toughness value, if you um, do the, the experimental work has been uh, done to measure the uh, toughness uh, value on the uh, you know uh, sample and uh, if the toughness is measured. So, how the toughness is uh, varying on a uh, welded specimen. So, suppose uh, uh, that you have uh, uh, a welded uh, specimen. So, you have uh, something like uh, if you talk about a normal uh, weld. So, it, it, it is going like this and uh, in, in that case uh, you have uh, the different zones. So, this is your uh, weld metal zone and then uh, you have the different zones. So, on this side you have the heat affected zone and uh, then uh, on this side uh, you have the uh, you know uh, base metal zone. So, uh, accordingly uh, so what has been um, seen that uh, if you look or look at the different uh, you know uh, zones. So, this is your uh, you know weld metal zone and uh, uh, you know and then uh, if you talk about uh, uh, this, uh, so it, is, it has been done for the uh, you know uh, alloy steel. So it is for the low alloy steel material. Now uh, at, at this uh, you know stage, uh, your uh, temperature will be somewhere uh, close to you know 1200 degree centigrade. Then uh, further, if you uh, go, you you have uh, the uh, temperature as suppose 900 degree centigrade then you have uh, 750 degree centigrade and uh, so it will uh, go now further to uh, 600 degree centigrade and then ultimately you have this as 400 and then you have uh, 200 as the unchanged base material. So, if you uh, try to look at the you know uh, toughness values which are uh, indicated uh, uh, by experiment in the different zones. So, what has been seen that uh, uh, you know if you come to uh, this this zone. So, at, at, at this point uh, uh, if you see uh, at, at this point uh, the toughness will be very very small. So, it, it, it will be like this it, it, it will be coming down. And, uh, uh, that uh, will be uh, you know. Uh, so, in this case uh, it will be smaller and uh, then uh, the toughness will further increase and uh, uh, then in, in this zone it will be uh, you know further uh, going this way. So, that will be the variation of uh, toughness in the uh, you know mild steel. So, uh, basically you have uh, uh, the zones going like this zone will be uh, your uh, uh, weld metal zone and uh, uh, this zone is the overheated zone basically. And then uh, you know the, the zone uh, uh, on, on this side where the toughness is uh, again further decreasing. So, this zone is basically the, the possible imbrittle zone. So, that is a zone of possible imbrittlement.
So, uh, you know, there is a decrease in the toughness. If you look into this zone here, uh, you know, as the grain coarsening is uh, uh, taking place, so that there will be decrease in the uh, toughness value. This is your uh, on this side, you have the notch toughness. So, so accordingly, you have uh, the you know, and, and after that, it comes to a uh, uh, you know constant value. Uh, if you talk about the uh, you know high strength uh, low alloy steels, where uh, you have uh, uh, that is HSLA, where you have the grain refinement uh, uh, going on. So in those cases, you know the the increase in toughness is there uh, towards the this side. So here you have the constant value, but in this case, your toughness is going on um, increasing uh, you know in, in, in this uh, region. So, that is uh, for the uh, you know high strength uh, low alloy steels. Now, uh, that basically will be depending. So, uh, this, uh, this change in the uh, toughness uh, it uh, is basically these values are affected by uh, many factors and uh, these factors are basically uh, by the uh, you know chemical composition then uh, microstructure and uh, uh, grain size. So, uh, you know um, uh, these are the factors uh, basically which are uh, uh, you know uh, helpful in uh, predicting these uh, toughness values. So, they are affecting the toughness value whereas, the prediction of the toughness in the under, under bead zone is rather uh, you know difficult. Uh, uh, it is uh, it is not easy to you know uh, you know predict that uh, you know toughness in that under bead zone. Now, the other uh, you know uh, uh, aspect of uh, this uh, you know uh, toughness of HAZ now, now there are uh, other properties also uh, not about the toughness basically it is about the other uh, effect on other properties that is your stress corrosion cracking. So, that also uh, very much takes place. Uh, you know in a structural uh, steels in the presence of certain uh, uh, sulfur compounds like you have uh, you know S2S or chlorides and alkalis. Uh, if the R hardness of the under zone under bead zone is uh, you know very very high. So, uh, that is uh, normally you have uh, you know uh, uh, what has been seen that in normally in the offshore constructions uh, many a times uh, you need to have you know uh, you have to uh, compel, there is a compelling, uh, compelling you know uh, on the designer to uh, you know lower the carbon content because the hardness uh, which is uh, uh, permitted it is normally uh, smaller. So, if you increase the hardness that is going to uh, affect you know the, uh, the properties of uh, the materials so that may fail. So, basically many a times in, in, in the pipes of so pipes or so, uh, we try to limit the hardness to maybe the value of uh, 150 to 200 uh, maybe HB, uh, you know, especially when uh, you know uh, if they are under the uh, subjected to the sore conditions. So, because uh, you have uh, you know sulfur and all that present there. So, in those cases uh, you know the we try to limit the hardness to maybe uh, 150 to even uh, the uh, 200 or, or 250 maximum the weaker hardness. So, uh, that stress corrosion cracking uh, is the another uh, you know uh, point which is uh, uh, very much uh, to be kept into mind uh, when we talk about the properties of the HAZ. So, uh, that is about the, the effect and uh, in a nutshell uh, what we need to know that uh, normally whenever uh, uh, we do the welding. So, as uh, the uh, structure microstructure is uh, changed. So, that leads to change in the um, properties of the material change in the uh, you know uh, because of the change in the microstructure as uh, we have understood the you know. Uh, you know different uh, mechanism we have studied about the different type of uh, uh, heat treatment uh, processes also and uh, there also we have seen that I mean I mean we can always uh, you know correlate uh, with the the type of thermal treatment the material is subjected to uh, we can further say that uh, this kind of uh, microstructural changes is going to be you know 
be there in the material because of the uh, thermal treatment. So, uh, as we know that uh, uh, when you have uh, the uh, annealing treatment in that case you will have the softening uh, uh, which is uh, you know uh, softening is achieved and if uh, you have the uh, higher cooling in that case you have the hardening achieved. So, that way it will make the, the hard phases. So, so that way then we also studied about uh, you know uh, uh, different uh, you know uh, processes like uh, for non ferrous we had studied about the while we discussing about the uh, heat treatment processes uh, about the heat uh, non ferrous uh, materials especially we talked about the solution treatment and then we talked about the aging you know uh, process. So, uh, that we know that we have the supersaturated solution and then uh, you know it is uh, cooled and then when it is heated further. So, in that precipitates grow. So, that way uh, you get uh, basically uh, you know the formation of precipitates which impede the motion of the dislocation uh, you know uh, in, in the in, in the journey of the movement of the dislocation to uh, to create the fracture or, or the deformation. So, uh, you know uh, many of the um, you know so uh, and if you try to leave that if you uh, do the you know uh, uh, if you do not do the artificial aging. So, you can go for the even natural aging. So, natural aging also is uh, uh, there and normally you have certain materials which are in, uh, you know uh, in natural way they age. So, so there are uh, aluminum 4.5 percent copper or, or 4 percent copper that is duralumin. So, that is a natural aging uh, you know material uh, you know, but uh, uh, even the steels also they are also susceptible to aging. So, uh, normally the uh, you know mild steel is very much susceptible to the uh, aging because uh, you know uh, if the nitrogen is present in the um, steel in that case the uh, uh, precipitation of iron nitride is uh, you know occurring. So, in that case uh, you know these uh, precipitates uh, you know um, uh, uh, they will be precipitated at uh, the temperature below A 1. So, when uh, we are heating you know and, and uh, we go to uh, temperature below A 1 in that case you have the precipitation of iron nitrides that is Fe uh, 16 and 2 that is uh, you know formed uh, at even uh, room temperature and that is known as steel aging. So, uh, you know when we try to heat uh, in the range of 200 to 300 even so, in that band if you look at you know go towards the uh, lower temperature side. So, in that uh, you know region you can have uh, the uh, formation of these nitrides and uh, these are the uh, you know precipitation. So, that is natural aging uh, taking place. So, these are you know affecting the properties of the material and these are the obvious effects you know uh, on the properties of the material because they are going to affect your uh, a microstructure they are going to affect the mechanical properties uh, you know of the welded joint. So, we will have uh, you know discussion about uh, other effects in our uh, coming lectures. Thank you very much.